and welcome to this week's edition of Stock Breakthroughs. I'm your host, Aaron Beal. Well, there's no doubting that energy prices are heading higher. Gas is hovering above $3, and oil is just below 70 and it will continue to climb this summer. In fact, a new utility rates in Maryland, which is home for our Taipan Financial News headquarters, climbed a staggering 54% on June 1st. And Christian DeHamer, publisher of Crisis Trader, weighs in with us today with one of the best ways to play the short-term hysteria in the electricity market. According to Chris, he's looking at a great power grid play. Welcome, Christian. Thanks, Aaron. Chris, can you tell us why power grids are so important, especially during the peak electricity usage season? Well, as you know, a power grid has surge times and low use times. Grid operators arrange to have some generators idle on standby to put out new electricity when called for. This is expensive and inefficient. The company I'm recommending has a flywheel technology that will suck up surplus energy when demand falls short of supply and will return that energy to the grid when the reverse happens. It's simple. Interesting. So, Chris, what's this company you're talking about? Um, can you tell us more about who they are and what they do? Well, Aaron, Beacon Power, ticker, ticker symbol is BCON on the NASDAQ, goes for the power, does for the power grid what hybrid car does for automobiles. When you hit the brakes, the kinetic energy is recaptured in the form of electricity, which goes to a large battery for later use. In a hybrid car, the system doesn't work very well, because chemical batteries are not particularly good at taking a charge in large bursts. In fact, I've seen statistics that claim that the Toyota Prius would have almost as good gas mileage just by removing all the heavy batteries. Regardless, the answer to power surges in the electric grid aren't batteries, it's the flywheel. The flywheels store energy and have been in use for centuries. Think potter's wheel or anniversary clock. So, Chris, did Beacon Power then, did they invent the flywheel, or have they just taken the existing technology and perfected it and made it their own? No, they didn't invent it. It's been around for years. But what they do is they take the flywheels, and they do it for the, for the power grid, and it'll soon be ready for commercialization. Now, you're talking about massive machines here. This power storing contraption will be able to hold 25 kilowatt hours of energy when operating at maximum speed of 16,000 RPMs. This, these flywheels are also scalable. You can link them together and create an energy matrix, which will be able to store greater amounts of energy, absorbing and releasing it much faster than normal batteries can. This company claims that its technology will give grid operators the benefits of greater reliability, faster response time, cleaner operation, including zero direct emissions of carbon dioxide, nitrogen oxide, sulfur dioxide, mercury, and lower maintenance costs compared to conventional power generation. Well, Chris, it does sound like Beacon has done a lot to perfect these flywheels. But I'm still kind of skeptical of how popular this technology can really become. How do we know that flywheels are going to be, continue to be in demand? Well, Beacon has equipment installed and operating in California and New York with an array of six kilowatt hour flywheels. This test effort is backed by the Department of Energy to iron out technical wrinkles and obtain certification from the grid operators. The California system completed its field test trial on January 31, 2007. It earned a positive evaluation from both the CEC and the California ISO for use in California. On March 22, 2007, the New York State Energy Research and Development Authority and the U.S. Department of Energy confirmed the successful outcome of a field trial there. In North America, the power grid frequency regulation market in areas that are deregulated and accessible via open bid market mechanisms was valued at over $650 million in 2006. Based on global electrical production, we believe the worldwide frequency regulation market is 15 times higher than that. Chris, can you tell us a bit about the fundamentals of Beacon Power? I know a lot of these fuel cell companies aren't doing so well lately, so why do you like it? Well, it's not a fuel cell company, it's a flywheel company. And you may have heard about Beacon Power before because it's a 10-year-old story stock. That said, as an investor, you can make triple-digit gains if you buy at the right time. Beacon Power saw a huge run-up after Hurricane Katrina. That said, you won't get a penny stock without having some problems. Beacon's main problem is that it needs to raise I mean $20 million before the end of the year. The bet is that Beacon will get more financing, very probable, and there will be an issue with the power grid this summer. For example, there will be a brownout, a blackout, a surge in rates, or an act of God, such as a hurricane, that will turn Beacon into a proxy play. 
There is also the real possibility of its business model working in California and New York. Again, they passed the field test. The time is ripe for speculative buy on Beacon Power. Given the right scenario, this could be a 3 to $5 stock. Well, good, Chris. We'll check it out as a good speculative bet. Now, I know that you're fond of recommending stocks that aren't for the faint of heart. Are there any other energy plays that you're looking at for the summer? Well, you're right, Aaron. These stocks aren't for widows and orphans, but I believe the best, off, the best defense is a good offense. And since energy prices are through the roof, it stands to reason that exploration companies are doing amazingly well. Right now, my Crisis Trader members are in a play that has exclusive rights on the Horn of Africa. The stock is trading at $0.65 cents a share. We're already up about 200%. It could hit $8 by the fall. Well, Chris, unfortunately, we're running out of time for today. Um, but how can our viewers learn more about becoming a Crisis Trader member and learning more about this company you're talking about? Well, Aaron, you can visit www.crisistrader.com, and you'll find all the information you need right there. Great, we'll do. Well, thanks for joining us today, Chris. Thank you for watching Stock Breakthroughs. I'm your host, Aaron Beal, and I'll see you back here next week.